Today, we're going to be talking about how to use VirtualBox on Windows, including walking through all of its features and even installing a Linux operating system to run as a virtual machine. First off, you'll want to go over to virtualbox.org where you can download the latest and greatest VirtualBox version. There's this big button that says download VirtualBox 7 and you'll look for your specific type of host. You don't have to necessarily do this on Windows. VirtualBox is currently available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, just select whatever host you are using. In this example, I'm using Windows, so I'll select Windows. Then I'm going to save this setup application in my downloads folder, where then I will run through the installation. So now I'm going into my downloads folder where I've downloaded VirtualBox 7 and running the executable to install it. I'm going to give the install administrative privileges so I can install it. And then I'm going to run through the setup wizard really quick and hit next. Here it's going to save VirtualBox in a default location, which is C program files, Oracle, VirtualBox. That's fine by me. If you need something else, you can browse and change it. Hit next when you're ready. And then yes, to install the networking feature that will help you with interfacing your wireless or wired connection over to a virtual machine. You'll need it in order to have access to the internet. So yes. And then if there are any missing dependencies, you'll need those as well. After you hit install, it'll take a few minutes while VirtualBox gets installed on your computer. And then after it's done, we'll launch it and run it. But there is one more step that you have to do before being able to actually successfully run a virtual machine on your computer. And that's in to enable virtualization through your BIOS. So I'm gonna deselect this and hit finish. So I'm going to first restart the computer first. And on my system, when it's booting up, I need to hit the F2 or delete key. Yours might be something else to get into BIOS. And if I've successfully got into my BIOS, I see a screen like this. Mine's a little fancy because it's a more updated type of BIOS. It's UEFI based. Yours might not look like this, but no big deal. You'll be looking for a similar option. So I'm looking for a more advanced option here. I don't currently have it on my screen. What I see in the bottom right though is F7, the advanced mode. Yours might be something else, but just look around and try to get to your advanced settings where you can see some tabs to select various different settings. And I'm going to the advanced tab on mine. Of course, yours might be in a different location. We're really looking for some sort of CPU configuration tab or setups. If you can't find it, just go through every tab, search for VTX or AMD V basic or basically any term that mentions virtualization because I want to enable that option. If you can't find it anywhere, it's likely that your system just cannot run a virtual machine because it doesn't have virtualization support. It's probably too old. Most modern computers do support this type of emulation. So again, I'm going down to CPU configuration. So mine gives me a little bit of information about the processor and system information on which I'm running. Below, I'm going to look for different types of modes and read the description below. Once I get to SVM mode, I notice it says enable, disable CPU virtualization. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Again, yours might say VTX or AMD V. Mine says SVM mode. Then I want to select from the drop down instead of it being disabled, enabled. And then I want to make sure I save and exit. Don't just exit out of BIOS because the settings you just set will not be saved. I'm going over to exit and hitting save changes and reset. Mine's nice because it tells me what I've changed. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to allow the computer to start back up with the new setting enabled. All right, now that we're back into Windows, let's find VirtualBox and start it. Here's mine. And now we can continue talking about the software and I'll be showing you how to use it. So get excited because you're ready to use it. So some quick information about Oracle's VirtualBox. It's a free software that allows you to create virtual machines, which in turn help you emulate computers on an already existing computer. You're gonna need at least four gigabytes of memory in order to run this application. When you hear me say virtualization, that just refers to a process where you create a virtual machine in an emulated environment, such as VirtualBox. Just know that you can use your physical computer to create more virtual computers using the existing physical hardware of your computer. So let me show you around the software. You'll first notice tools up the left top, which gives you these tools over on the right hand side, preferences, import, export, new and add. If you have an existing virtual machine and you want to import it, you use this button. If you want to export a virtual machine that you have in VirtualBox, you use this button. That way you can move things around from computers. You can also 
add an existing virtual machine if it exists on your physical computer but is not in VirtualBox. The one we wanna focus on is new because this is how we get to set up a new virtual machine. Now, one great operating system that you could potentially install here for free is a Linux-based one called Ubuntu. A lot of people wanna try Ubuntu, but just don't know how to. Well, you can go over to ubuntu.com and download an ISO for free. That will help you install Ubuntu in VirtualBox. I'm just going to download the latest Ubuntu desktop. At this moment for me, Ubuntu 22.04 is available, so I'm just gonna hit download that. It'll take a few moments and then the image file will pop up as being downloaded. You can see here I have Ubuntu 22.04, the desktop version, AMD 64. I'm just gonna hit save and let that finish downloading. So back to setting up a virtual machine, I'm gonna first name it. Well, since it's an Ubuntu operating system, I'm just gonna put Ubuntu here as the name. The folder where it shows up in, I'm just going to use the default, which is VirtualBox VMs. Under the home user, that's fine. Then I'm going below and seeing that type and version have already been selected for me, which is fantastic. As it's assuming, since we named it Ubuntu, we're going to have a Linux operating system and it's going to be the 64-bit version of Ubuntu. And that's exactly correct for us. Of course, you can select different types if you want to install something else. There's choices for Mac OS, BSD, Solaris, Linux, and even Windows. Notice we have ISO image labeled here. This is where we want to select that image that we downloaded a moment ago from the Ubuntu website. Notice here my downloads folder. I'm gonna select Ubuntu 22.04 and hit open. Following that, I'm going to skip the unintended installation option. All right, great. Then I'm gonna hit next. Fantastic. Now we're asked what memory and how many cores of the processor we wanna to allocate to this virtual machine. What I'll tell you here is just keep it out of the orange and red. That way you don't starve your physical computer of memory and cores so it can continue to run properly. If you get too high, it'll bog down your system. So anyways, I'm gonna give mine eight gigs since I have 32 available, and I'm gonna give mine a couple cores here just to make things run a little smoother and faster. One thing I'll mention is the enable EFI for modern operating systems. Almost all of them support EFI-based BIOS, so I typically select this just to install modern operating systems, and then I hit next. If for some reason you get a problem installing or starting up your operating system, try disabling the EFI support. Anyways, now I get to specify what disk size I wanna give the machine. You can give it whatever you want. Again, don't starve your system, but know that the virtual hard disk that you're creating and the size you're creating is not going to be completely allocated unless you select pre-allocate full size, meaning the virtual machine will grow as needed and not require this full size from your regular storage disk. So I highly suggest not selecting this option. Anyways, that's it by default. I'm gonna hit next and we're almost done and ready to start up our machine. How fantastic. We're just gonna review the name and everything in here. Everything looks good to me. And I'm gonna hit finish. What's cool here is it says Ubuntu Linux is powered off. We're ready to start it. You'll get this option. If you have a virtual machine selected, there will be options, operations, log, settings, and start. One setting that I normally set before I start things is if the operating system supports it, go down to display and enable the 3D acceleration. This will help render graphics a little better for you. Hit OK, and then double click on Ubuntu Linux or hit the start button. It'll say that it's powering up the virtual machine. All right, and then the screen comes up here, virtual box gets loading, and this is the first page I see where I can try and install Ubuntu I'm just gonna hit try or install Ubuntu and give it a few moments to actually boot up. We're well on our way right now to installing Ubuntu as a virtual machine on our host Windows computer. So take a moment to hit that like button for me. Also think about subscribing below as I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. Let's hit install Ubuntu. I'm gonna select what language I want. English is fine. I'm gonna go through the normal installation. Just hit continue. They make this really easy to set up. I'm gonna hit erase disk and install Ubuntu. And just hit install now. I'm gonna hit continue, select some city where I'm close by, and just type in something like Savvy Nick, and I'll just use the default as my computer name. Type in some password, confirm that password. Make sure you remember it, of course, because you'll be required to use it to log in. I'm gonna hit continue and let the installer do its thing. It's gonna take a few minutes, somewhere between 10, 20 minutes, depending on how fast and how many resources your virtual machine has. It also sometimes depends on your internet connection and how fast that is as it might be pulling down some packages from the internet. 
in order to install this Ubuntu operating system properly. What's nice here is if you just hit the minimize button and you minimize both your virtual machine and virtual box, you can go on using your host computer the normal way while this install process is taking place. That way you're just not waiting around on the screen. That's one of the most fantastic things about using these virtual machines. You can use both your physical computer and the virtual machine simultaneously and seamlessly. Especially if you have dual monitors, you can have the virtual machine on one monitor and your Windows computer on the second monitor. How cool is that? Cool, the installation is complete. It's gonna say restart now. All that means it's gonna restart this virtual machine here, not your computer. Just hit restart now, let VirtualBox do its thing. It might ask you to remove the installation media. Just press enter to do so. And then things should load back up and actually load you into Ubuntu for the first time if installation was successful. Here we go, I have my username and it's asking me for a password for the user. I'm gonna enter that in. Fantastic things seem to be working great. If you have problems with the resolution on the virtual machine, there are a few ways of going about this. Uh, one way is to go up to view and just hit the full screen mode or scaled mode, which will help scale the virtual machine. If your resolution's still kind of messed up, you don't like the way it looks, go to the display settings, change it to the aspect ratio that your computer runs. And that should help. As you can tell, now it's filled up correctly on my computer. If for some reason you don't like this mode, you can switch it over to full screen by doing control F and hitting switch. Always know at the bottom, you can have access to the same menu items as you had before, such as file machine, view, input, devices, and help. In order to get out of this full screen mode, if you don't like that, just hit control F again. That'll help you get out. Back to view, again, scaled mode is a nice one if you want to be able to quickly get between Windows and your virtual machine real quick by having access to basically these three buttons up top for the window. This now is a fully functional operating system that exists in VirtualBox and that you can use through your Windows computer. Fantastic work. You can do whatever you want here on Ubuntu, but I'm actually going to exit out of this virtual machine. Notice it says close virtual machine, power off machine, that's fine. This is just like hitting the power button to shut down your computer. Notice the virtual machine goes away. I still have VirtualBox up and my Ubuntu Linux operating system is powered off. I wanna review a few more settings and advanced things with your virtual machine. So Ubuntu Linux here, I'm gonna select that and hit settings and we're gonna get this pop up here. This can be important for beginners using VirtualBox to really understand how things work. One of the things that people get caught up on is network. By default, you have a network adapter that's set to NAT, or it says attached to NAT, which just stands for network address translation. So basically this just means it's gonna allow multiple devices, including your virtual machine, to use the local network and share it across your physical computer to the virtual machine. There are many different options. The two that we should really care about is NAT and bridged adapter. A bridge adapter is actually typically a little better because instead of using that translation layer, instead you get a direct network connection and an IP address on your local network. You can also select which network adapter you wanna use. Let's say I have a wireless and a wired network adapter and I wanna use my wired one, I can actually set that. In advanced settings, this is nice too because you can have the adapter type that you wanna use for your virtual machine, whether you wanna be in a promiscuous mode, and if you wanna just change up your MAC address, no problem. Also, of course, make sure that the cable connected is checked. You can hit okay, and that will change the settings for this particular adapter. Again, bridge adapter is one I suggest using if you want direct access to your network and an IP address on the local area network. You can also add more adapters if you want, if you have multiple networks, for example, I want Maybe I want a second adapter that's actually attached to the NAT and has a translation layer. I can do that as well. In the audio settings, by default, enable audio input is unchecked. So if you wanna use something like a microphone, you're gonna to have to check this box. It's another setting to definitely look at. Inside of storage, let's say for some reason, the installation for the operating system failed. Well, you can actually go back in here in this controller IDE, it says it's empty, it's a disc. So we can basically attach a disc or a CD if we want by going over to this disk, hitting choose or create, and then selecting the old file we had or choosing a disk file directly from our system. For example, back inside the downloads folder, I can hit Ubuntu, hit open, and now I have it reattached 
That way I go back into the installation media that I was using before. Display, we already kind of talked about. Make, make sure that if you can, give a little bit of extra video memory, as well as enable 3D acceleration if you can. It'll just help run things smoother on the virtual machine side. Again, this is gonna depend on the resources and how good the computer emulating the virtual machine is. If for some reason your physical computer starts running slow, back down your settings because more than likely the virtual machine is using too many resources. Under system, here's where the enable EFI checkbox is. If you have issues with your installation, you may want to try and disable this support. You can also change the base memory here. If for some reason, again, you're starving your system, you can back it down, let's say four gigs, which is what most Linux operating systems require nowadays, at least four gigs, something to take a look at. Processor settings can also be changed here under system. And those are some of the most important ones, but I definitely use this one under general advanced. Make sure if you want to share the clipboard, basically if you copy and paste, you can use this feature to share it across both your virtual machine and your host computer, meaning across Windows and Ubuntu here, I can bi-directionally copy anything I am on either system, which is a fantastic tool. You can also use drag and drop. This is good if you have two monitors. Other than that, it's kind of useless. I will mention you need to install VirtualBox guest editions in order to use this tool, the shared clipboard. I do have a video on how to do that as well. I'll post it in the description below specifically for Ubuntu. Check that out if you're interested in using that. Anyways, the final one that I sometimes use is in the user interface. I don't like to get distracted by any of the extra windows. Like when we look at the file machine view, input devices, debug, whatever help, underneath the screen earlier, you can actually set it to show up at the top of the screen or get rid of it completely by selecting that mode off. Always make sure to hit okay in order to actually allow the settings to take. And then the next time you power things up, those settings will be applied to the machine and you can run things. For example, if I go over to devices and check my network, look at that. Now I have two adapters set. I can log back into my machine and things should look very similar. Although things will be a little quicker because I enabled that 3D acceleration. Notice how fast the animations work. It's fantastic. Go and start using VirtualBox today. You now have no excuse because you know exactly how to use it, how to install your own operating system. Again, this is not limited to just Linux-based operating systems. You can use, you can install Windows the same way, Mac OS, if you wanna give that a try for some reason. Install whatever your heart desires by using the computer that you have at home. Congratulations on making it through. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.